Now, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and delete that watchtower container. Uh, we're not going to use it moving forward. I just wanted to show you guys how you could automate that last step. So just do a docker rm watchtower dash f. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is our current workflow. Uh, and that is, you know, whether you're using Watchtower to do the pulling of the image and restarting of the container, or if you're mainly do it, manually doing it yourself by doing a Docker Compose pull and then an up, at the end of the day, we have to recreate the container. So we have to tear down our current container. We have to build a brand new container with a brand new image and then start that container. And during that window of tearing down and building up, we are going to experience uh, a network outage, essentially. We are going to experience our application being down, right? Our app's going to be down until that new container gets built. So we are going to experience loss uh, with our production traffic. And I was trying to see uh, if there was a way we could achieve basically rolling updates with Docker Compose so that we could somehow um, do this upgrade process or, or push out new changes to our production server without experiencing any loss. And going through a whole bunch of Stack Overflow responses, there were some hacks that we could put together. I mean, we could really hack up Docker Compose to do a few things so that we can almost achieve something that's similar to a rolling update. Um, but ultimately, you know, these were hacks. These were nothing more than hacks, and they were not recommended to be run in a production network, right? Because remember, Docker Compose isn't meant for that. Docker Compose is not a container orchestrator. It is not meant to provide you a, a way to implement rolling updates or anything like that. Like at the core of Docker Compose, right? Remember. Docker Compose is just nothing more than a file that maps out to different Docker run commands, right? Because a service is nothing more than a container which gets created with Docker run. So this Docker Compose file just gives us a way to basically write down all of our Docker run commands within a YAML file. And then when we do our Docker Compose up, it just runs all of the Docker commands for us so that we don't need to actually type them out ourselves. So it's not an orchestrator. So what are some options that we have to help us achieve uh, you know, lossless upgrades and uh, rolling updates. Well, we can use one of the popular uh, container orchestrators that we have. Uh, and one of those is Kubernetes. So that's one of the purposes of Kubernetes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to cover Kubernetes in the next section. And I'm just kidding. Just kidding, guys. There's no way we're going to cover Kubernetes in this next section. I don't want this video series to end up being a 40-hour tutorial. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a built-in container orchestrator that comes with Docker, and that is Docker Swarm. And I know some of you guys are disappointed um, because I know you guys want to learn Kubernetes, and Kubernetes is the new kid on the block. Um, but the reason why I wanted to show you guys how to do this with uh, Docker Swarm is because, first of all, we already have it at our disposal. It's very easy. We don't really need to spend too much time going over the theory. And the main the main idea behind why I'm even showing you guys how to do this with Docker Swarm is to just show you guys what is the purpose of a container orchestrator, right? Because the idea behind this whole video tutorial series is not to show you how all of these tools uh, work and all the ins and outs and all the flags. It's to show you how you put all of these pieces together, why we need a container orchestrator, uh, and what it ultimately helps us achieve, right? So that's why I kind of walked you guys through all of these steps instead of just starting out with Docker Swarm because I wanted to show you why we need a container orchestrator. So in the next section, we're going to get started with Docker Swarm. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time going through the ins and outs of Docker Swarm. We're just going to get something up and running and just show how we can implement some sort of rolling update so that we can push out changes to our production network without experiencing uh, any loss or at least experiencing only minimal amounts of loss. I want to quickly highlight some of the differences between Docker Compose and Docker Swarm. You know, we already discussed some of the limitations with Docker Compose, and that is that it's ultimately not a container orchestrator. So it can't handle some of the more important lifecycle uh, events when it comes to spinning up, deleting containers, and being able to do rolling updates and things like that. That's something that Docker Swarm can handle, right? Docker Compose is a very simple tool. It's actually meant to only be a development tool that we can use to kind of spin up containers and then delete them, but it can't do much else. Uh, and it certainly can't do things like rolling updates. And another important thing about Docker Compose is uh, we can only use it to deploy containers onto one server. So if I wanted to be able to distribute my express containers, you know, maybe five or six of them across multiple servers so that if one goes down, we'll have some redundancy with the other servers being able to pick up the slack. I can't do that with Docker Compose. 
that's where Docker Swarm comes in. Docker Swarm is an orchestrator, right? So there's more logic behind Docker Swarm. Docker Compose can only run just a bunch of Docker run commands, right? It's just a bunch of Docker run commands that's listed out in a YAML format. Docker Swarm has logic, has brains. It gives us the ability to, you know, not only spin up containers, but we can distribute them across as many servers as we want. So if we've got five, 10 production servers, we can spread them out across all of our servers. We can handle the update process. So if we need to uh, push a new image to our production server, Docker Swarm can then uh, basically spin up new containers, update those containers, and then only once we verify those containers are up and running, we can then delete the old containers. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility when it comes to our production uh, environment and giving us some more tools that Docker Compose doesn't provide us. And when it comes to Docker Swarm, like I said, you know, uh, Docker Swarm gives us a multi-node environment, which means we can use multiple servers to deploy our applications. We don't need to run everything all on one server. And so each server within a, a Docker Swarm is referred to as a node. And we've got two different kinds of nodes. We've got manager node, and we've got a worker node. I'm not going to go too much into the details of it, but just, you know, you, I think just based off of those names, you have an idea as to what each one does, but a manager node handles uh, all the brains behind everything, right? The manager node is the one that uh, pushes out tasks to the worker nodes and the worker nodes carry out those tasks. So the control plane uh, is going to reside on the manager nodes and then the worker nodes just run tasks that it receives. And keep in mind, uh, a manager node can be both a manager node and a worker node. And I think that's what the default configuration is. So uh, that is something to keep in mind. But in our in this video series, we're just going to have one server. So we're just going to use Docker Swarm to spin up one individual node that's both a manager node and a worker node to deploy our application. And you might be thinking, well, if we're just using uh, one node, is there potentially any reason why we not we don't just go for Docker Compose? Well, first of all, you know things like rolling updates; those are things that we can't do with Docker Compose. And Docker Compose ultimately is not a production-ready tool; it's a development tool. So you shouldn't be using it for your production environment unless it's for like some fun little home project or things of that nature.